Hi, in this video, we will have a look at a solution scenario and features of worker services and its use cases. And finally, cloud migration path for your on-premises background services. At end of this video, you would be able to answer when to choose .NET Core worker services over .NET Windows services and which Azure service is best fit to migrate on-premises long-running worker loads to cloud. So stay tuned till end of this video to get more technical insights of .NET Core and Azure Stack. Let's have a look at solution scenario first. Here is an extract of solution architecture diagram for here you can see that there is an inventory management system that connects to the data source through some exposed APIs and they want to extend their current architecture to build new reporting management system. So they want to develop a new data transfer component and their technology choice is using a .NET framework based window service and that need to be migrated to the cloud sometime near. With that note, let's have a look what other technology choices can be considered for building a background service. Before we take a look at features of .NET Core Worker Services, let's have a brief overview of what is Windows Services. Every Windows user might have seen a list of Windows Services from the Task Manager because they are core component of Windows Operating System. It runs in the background even if no one is logged on to the machine. If you are a .NET developer, then you might be familiar with the Windows Service Project template that is available in Visual Studio for long running service creation using standard .NET framework. You can programmatically pause, stop and start Windows services as per your application requirements. There could be a plenty of real, real world scenarios. We can refer like uh, send promotion emails at 3 p.m., backup database weekly, monitoring a folder, print documents or even run a ETL feeds, etc. Now, let's take a look at what are .NET Core worker services. Uh, worker services will generally be a long running services performing periodic tasks. Neither do not have user interfaces or does not support direct user interaction likewise Windows services. Worker services is basically a console application. In addition, it brings inbuilt features such as a dependency injection and uh, logging, which you can simply configure by using the same ASP.NET Core extensions that turns a console application into something more powerful. In a nutshell, it's a brand new way to create Windows services in .NET Core, but a lot more than that in terms of designing applications for cross-platform and cloud hosting. Now, you would have understood the difference between .NET Windows services and .NET Core worker services. Let's see the use cases of worker services for better understanding. The first use case is, if you have a requirement to target both Windows and Linux platform, then worker services likely may be a good fit to build a cross-platform long-running background services. You can simply download NuGet package called systemd and you can start develop Linux services. Next, the worker services is particularly applicable when we design a microservice architecture. Let's say a web app can be refactored into distinct, separately deployable and scalable services. For example, you can offload the task like processing messages from a queue or even stream or react to a file or data change and so. Another use case is if you want to develop a general console application with ASB.NET core extensions such as a configuration, logging and dependency injection, then you can go for uh, .NET core worker services. Because you don't want to build a cross-cutting component like logging from the scratch. You can simply uh, inherit that feature. Similarly, dependency injection, the code pattern which helps you to build loosely coupled architecture. You can uh, inherit without uh, uh, spending much time to do all the one-time setup. Lastly, if your organization is planning cloud migration, then easily migrate and enjoy benefits of hosting less expensive services on cloud platform. So what are the cloud migration options for your on-premises background services? If you are migrating to Azure cloud, 
and uh, you can simply migrate your windows services like lift and shift to azure vm as infrastructure as a service model for example it might be a windows or linux program that you want to execute from a windows or dotnet application or you can choose a range of operating system for an azure vm and uh, run your service or executable on that vm alternatively web jobs are part of azure app services that is platform as a service model web jobs are relatively easy to create deploy and execute custom jobs as a background task within azure web app you can simply convert dotnet core worker services as azure web jobs with a publish option in the visual studio and host it in the azure without extra setup in case if you are build the windows services using a dotnet windows services then you you will not be able to convert to uh, azure web jobs directly for that reason you have to convert as console application then you have to upgrade to uh, web jobs so that is why if you, if you are having a requirement to build a windows services if it is going to be in a fresh development then consider worker services than windows services so that when you migrate to the cloud you can simply migrate rather doing any conversions and you without any extra uh, azure uh, infrastructure setup Alternatively, you can consider the Azure functions that is serverless model that comes with uh, scaling support or you can consider Azure logic apps uh, which is a design based approach to build workflow or you can consider Azure server fabric uh, for microservices development with support for actor model stateful or stateless services if you are developing cloud native solutions. That's all for now. I hope this video helped you to learn how to make a more informed decision on selecting a technology that fit for your solution requirements. Thanks for watching. If you find this video is helpful, please like this video and share your comments.